everybody. Welcome back to yet another episode. I'm Kyle Johnson, your friendly neighborhood biochemist. We're going to start right in as we always do. This week we're talking about carnitine. Now, carnitine is an amino acid, simply put, that we make in our bodies, but how it works is a little more complicated than your average supplement is going to be. We're going to dive into a little bit of the biochemistry. I'm not going to try to get too much in the weeds, but to give you enough information to where you really know what's going on. All right, now exactly how carnitine works, as I said, is a little complicated. We're gonna take a little trip down memory lane in a second, but for those of you who are just looking for the basic synopsis, carnitine helps shuttle fatty acids into your mitochondria, which you know is the powerhouse of the cell, to be burned as energy. That is as simple as we can make it, but that process is a little complicated. I mentioned mitochondria. You know if you went to middle school or high school biology that mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell. It's where we're gonna generate almost all of our ATP. You're familiar with ATP most likely. If you're not, simply put, it stands for adenosine triphosphate. It's an adenosine molecule with three phosphate groups attached. When one of those phosphate groups breaks off, you're gonna have an energy release and adenosine diphosphate with a new inorganic phosphate being broken off. Creatine actually can help take over there, but that's in another video. So that's ATP. Now the next point we need to cover real fast is chain length of fatty acids. You may have heard of a supplement known as medium chain triglycerides, MCTs. There are also short chains and long chains. This is speaking of the carbon length of those fatty acid tails, and there are big ones and small ones. We classify them in short, medium, and long, depending on how long those chains are. Now, the cool thing about the shorter and some of the medium chain triglycerides is they don't need some sort of a big transporter to get in and out of the cell to be burned as energy because they're small. And there's a rule in biology, small, non-charged or non-polar molecules can diffuse real quick and easy into a cell. You wouldn't want just any old thing being able to get in and out of cells because that could really screw some things up and maybe even poison us or make us sick in some way. But the long chain fatty acids, these are pretty long and pretty big molecules, those do require a transporter because of their size. That's where carnitine enters the picture. Carnitine exists in our bodies in an enzyme known as carnitine acyl transferase, one and two. A little bit of a big term, don't worry about it. It's a part of this enzyme complex that's going to help shuttle and it does so by grabbing that long chain fatty acid transferring it or transporting it into the cell. That's the job of acyl transferase one, and then acyl transferase two helps by releasing it. Now, there is something that can actually halt this process of carnitine helping to shuttle these long chain fatty acids to be burned, and that is insulin. More directly, it's a molecule called malonyl COA, but insulin is what's spiking this thing called malonyl COA in the first place. So when we have something like a high carbohydrate meal, our insulin spikes in order to make up for the fact that we would go hyperglycemic, right? You don't want a ton of sugar flowing around in your blood, so we need to get it into the muscle cells and wherever it needs to go to be burned quickly. So because of the potential poison of a ton of glucose hitting your system, insulin is trying to take it out and at the same time spikes this molecule called malonyl COA. That happens because we don't wanna to try to burn a bunch of fat at the same time that we're trying to burn a bunch of glucose. In order to get the glucose more efficiently burned, it makes sense that your body would shut down that fatty acid oxidation in order to get rid of all that glucose. So high carbohydrate, high insulin, high malonyl COA, won't get into the, too much of the biochemistry of how that happens, but understand that if you're having a bunch of carbohydrates, carnitine's really gonna lose its efficacy in what it's trying to accomplish. Now, I mentioned how carnitine is mainly used for weight loss. Some people also use it for an energy boost because it's helping to shuttle those long chains in. That's theoretical. Not a ton of research to show that, but there's a ton of anecdotal things that people will say it's really helped them. I actually take it myself. I've found it to be quite helpful, but research is still lacking on that subject, so we can't really make that claim. With that said, we're not a doctor. We don't play one on the internet. We say that in all of our videos. If you ever have concerns about a, a supplement that you're taking, always consult your physician, be your own scientist, be your own advocate. Last thing I wanna mention about L-carnitine, it comes in a bunch of different forms. My personal favorite is acetyl L-carnitine. Acetyl L-carnitine has that acetyl group attached, which helps it to pass your blood brain barrier so that your brain can get some of that L-carnitine as well. If you're taking that form, your dosage is gonna be anywhere between 630 milligrams all the way up to 2,500 milligrams. Start low, build your way up, see which one works for you, see how much you really need to take.